Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We here at Blessed Hope Forever are looking for our new home. It's going to happen. It's probably going to happen very soon. This is our eternal abode. Uh, it's a little more than just heaven. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Hopefully I can bring some scripture to bear that will shed some light on this. And maybe perhaps dispel a few of the myths surrounding this whole subject. So thank you for joining us. Now, it should be evident that the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ, is the time of the fulfillment of Israel's national blessings that, that came through the covenant that God made with them. Uh, this is a time in which God will make a divine display of the absolute authority of divine government through uh, His rule and His reign. Uh, it's during that time that living individuals uh, are being subjected to and tested by the authority of the king. Okay, the millennial age is designed by God to be the final test of fallen humanity under the most ideal circumstances, uh, surrounded by every enablement to obey him, to be subject to his rule, uh, from whom the outward sources of temptation have been removed, Satan is bound for that period of a thousand years, so that man may be found and proved to be a failure in, in even this last testing of fallen humanity. That says a lot about us today. There's a message there for us today. Even with Satan bound, man fails. Now, uh, it is during this period, uh, it is obvious that resurrected individuals uh, most likely will not commingle with those in earthly bodies. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. The fact of the matter, dearly beloved, is that resurrected individuals who need no testing because they're righteous already uh, really have no place on earth during that period of testing. Uh, they don't need to be brought into subjection to the authority of the king because they are reigning with Christ. Uh, they're completely uh, subject to him, but they're not on earth being tested and so they, they have no rightful place on the earth at that time uh, I think many in the idea of many Christians uh, in their minds they, they kind of look at the millennial age the kingdom age as where that you've got earthly Saints commingling with those in glorified bodies I don't I don't see that in Scripture uh, sounds kind of like you know it'd be kind of cool you know but I just don't see that I don't see that and I base that on looking at the purpose for that period and uh, everything that takes place during that period those who would place resurrected individuals on the earth to undergo the rigors 
of the king's reign, I think they miss the purpose of God in the millennial age. So the essential character and purpose in the millennium leads me to the conclusion that resurrected individuals, although having a part in the millennium, are not on the earth to be subjects of the king's reign. So who occupies the heavenly Jerusalem? And so maybe we can talk about that a little bit. Now we know from Hebrews chapter 11 that Abraham looked for a city which has foundations, which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's Hebrews 11.10. Uh, other Old Testament saints look for the same. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11.16, uh, we read, but now they desire a better country, that is a, a heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Their hope was a heavenly city. This same heavenly city is described in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, where it's called the heavenly Jerusalem. In Galatians uh, chapter 4, we see it called the Jerusalem, which is above. In Revelation uh, chapters 3, 12, and 21, it's called the city of my God. Uh, New Jerusalem, it's called the, the holy city, New Jerusalem. That great city, the holy Jerusalem. Uh, so it, it's clearly seen to be the hope of the church, saints. It's our hope. Uh, it is the church of the firstborn, according to Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, so it these are the ones who occupy this heavenly Jerusalem. So it appears from the text that it's without question this heavenly city will consist of the church, the body of Christ from this present age, but we can expect other redeemed individuals to be in that heavenly city as well. Uh, Old Testament saints, they had to do with God before grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ as we know it. Uh, in the gospel. Uh, when faith rested on promise, they looked for the coming one and, and they will have a, a blessed part in this kingdom when they too shall judge the world. Uh, we know that from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So it would seem then that the writer to the Hebrews has given us a picture of the heavenly city in which place there will be gathered together with Christ the unfallen angels, the resurrected and, and translated saints of the church age, and all resurrected Old Testament and tribulation saints. Now, I think this interpretation finds uh, good support in Revelation chapter 21 where the walls of the Holy Jerusalem are described because in verse 12, there's reference to the angels and the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And in verse 14, there's a reference to the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Angels, saints of Israel and the, and the Old Testament, saints of the church, all are included within the wall. Now, as I mentioned, it is a city. It's a city. The eternal city imp implies uh, for us association, fellowship, uh, dialogue, uh, the relationship of the saints to Christ. So it would have as much relevancy for the Old Testament saints as for the New Testament believers. It is the consistent teaching of Scripture that the Lord will gather unto himself in the eternal city the unfallen angels, the Old Testament saints, and the New Testament believers, where that they in resurrected, glorified bodies will share in the literal city and in, in its glory. One of the most important factors in all of this that I would like for you to consider is, is that it is in, into this place, this, this heavenly city, can only be entered into by resurrection. No earthly, physical bodies can enter into it. 
So I'm going to suggest that there'll be no co-mingling of resurrected saints and glorified bodies with those who are actively living in on earth during the, tri the, the kingdom age in, in literal physical bodies. No commingling together. That does not mean that, that there will not be a reunion of sorts in, in the end when all of this is over. But during that thousand year reign, I do not believe there'll be any commingling of living, resurrected, glorified saints of the heavenly Jerusalem which probably hovers above Palestine at that time and doesn't come and settle down on earth until the end of the thousand years when the new heaven and new earth are created. Uh, it's not the sphere of the living saved who go into the millennium. It, they will look to the rebuilt earthly Jerusalem as their capital city. The dwelling place of the resurrected saints during the, the millennium is the heavenly Jerusalem. The living will realize the fulfillment of the national promises of the Old Testament in the millennium, while the resurrected, uh, those in glorified bodies, will realize the fulfillment of the expectation of a city which hath foundations, and that during the millennial age. There are certain passages which seem to indicate that we will have a direct relationship to the saved of Israel. In our final state, now Jesus said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. That's 1 John chapter 10, verse 16. That passage would seem to indicate that there will be a relation of all saved to one another because they are related to the same shepherd. So all the redeemed seem to be viewed as united into one flock under one shepherd at some point. But I don't believe that's until the end of the thousand years. Now my own personal belief is, is that those who live are born and live and die during the kingdom age because death will not be done away with. Uh, procreation will continue generations will come and go and those who are unsaved during the thousand year reign of Christ will sleep until the end of the thousand years where that they're raised for the, to the great white throne judgment. The saved, however, would have to immediately go into God's presence, no sleep, there's no sleep for millennial age saints when they die, like we sleep when we die, uh, or like the Old Testament saints are sleep. Uh, no sleeping for the millennial age saints. Not necessary. Okay, there's no, they, they just immediately go into God's presence. Because there is no other resurrection, you know, during that period. So during the millennial age, the church, we the church, uh, we're not entirely disassociated from the millennial age. Jesus said to Peter, The Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's Matthew chapter 19. In 1 Corinthians 6, we read, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? If the saints were separated entirely from it, the only way that the twelve could exercise the privilege promised to them would be to lose their position in the body of Christ. So this indicates that there will be a relation sustained between the living saints on the earth and the resurrected saints in the heavenly Jerusalem. The saints will exercise the ministry now committed to angels, uh, Hebrews chapter 2. Uh, so the occupants of this city are from the Old Testament age, the New Testament age, as well as unfallen angels. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, uh, says Hebrews, receive not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So it seems uh, to me to be indicated here that Israel cannot be made perfect until the body of Christ has been perfected. 
Now, we know that this city cannot be heaven, not as it currently exists today, you know, uh, because it is said to descend from it, from heaven. So, here are several considerations that lead us toward the conclusion that the New Jerusalem is God's one eternal resting place. Number one, I want to go through these. There's about five or six of them. Immediately we see the new heaven and, and the new earth and the new Jerusalem descending to the, to the new earth. We are told, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. So the object of the new heaven and earth is to bring, about, bring this about, okay, that God shall eternally have his home in this capital city of the new creation. Number two, no other eternal habitation of God is seen than, than this of the, of the new creation's capital. Number three, this heavenly city has the glory of God in it. We know that from Revelation 21 and 23, 21, 22, and 23. It also, number four, it also has the throne of God and, and the, the service of chapter 22 in Revelation, Revelation, properly called priestly service or spiritual worship. And number five, they shall see his face. So that must be the place of God's rest eternally. All we need to remember really is that the, the dwellers in the New Jerusalem shall reign unto the ages of the ages of the ages. I mean, forever and ever and ever. So my conclusion here is basically fairly simple, basically. The Old Testament held forth a national hope which will be fully realized. It will be realized fully in that age, the millennial age. The individual Old Testament saints' hope of an eternal city will be realized through resurrection in the heavenly Jerusalem where without losing distinction or identity, Israel will join with the resurrected and the translated or raptured saints of the church age to share in the glory of his reign forever. The nature of the millennium as the period of testing of fallen humanity under the righteous reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, it precludes the participation by resurrected individuals in that testing. So the millennial age will be concerned only with men who have been saved but are living in their natural bodies. I believe it will be brought, uh, the heavenly city will be brought into a relationship to the earth at the beginning of the millennium. Uh, my personal belief is that it's, it's made visible above the earth. It's suspended above Palestine. The nations will walk in the light of it. And it, it is from that heavenly city that Christ exerts his messianic rule in which the bride reigns and from which the rewarded Old Testament saints exercise their authority in judgment. And I believe that this interpretation, I believe that to be the solution to the, that perplexing problem that arises from placing resurrected saints on the earth to mingle freely with the unresurrected during the millennium. Uh, the fulfillment of Israel's national promises would be realized not in resurrected individuals, but rather in natural saved Israel who are living at the time of the second advent, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, the argument is always, and I've heard this a lot over the years, you know, well, Jesus mingled with those in physical bodies when he rose from the dead. So why wouldn't we co-mingle with those on earth during the thousand year reign of Christ. I don't think it's it's as much about us not being able to as it is it's not God's intention for us to. Uh, he's marked out our new home. Our, our new home is above, the new Jerusalem above, not on earth. The, the period of testing, we're not included in that period of testing. We're co-reigning with Christ during that period so it doesn't serve any purpose for us to be. And I believe that's, it's just that simple. So if looked at from God the Father's side, 
Uh, it'll be uh, the public earthly honoring of his son, just where men dishonored him on this earth. It'll be the carrying out of God's promises to his son and the prophecies concerning him, to give unto him the throne of his father David. It is the final divine trial of sinful man on this earth before the earth is destroyed and, and a new heaven and a new earth is created. It'll be God's answer, uh, so far as is possible before the new earth, of the prayer of his saints, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now looked at from Christ's side, well, let's, let's look at that for a moment. If you look at it from our Lord's standpoint, uh, he receives after long patience the kingdom of this world, which he's been constantly expecting uh, there at God's right hand, and he'll reign in that righteousness. Uh, he'll finally, at last, he'll finally be able to confer upon the meek of the earth the place and the, and the inheritance that he ever loved to promise them. He will share all of his kingly honors with his saints. Now, if we look at it from our own perspective, if we look at it, let's look at it from the saints side here. The millennium brings the three classes of saints and also earthly Israel into a state of indescribable blessedness. Uh, the very physical changes made in the earth reveal a little of the loving care that God will have taken for the comforts and the joys of his people. If we look at it from the side of the nations, the peoples of the earth, it'll be a thousand years under the iron rod scepter. Justice will be swift. It will be just. It'll be a thousand years under the reign of Christ, ruling with a rod of iron. Yet there will be peace at last among the nations. It'll be enforced, certainly, but it'll be real. A real peace. All nations will be compelled to go up from year to year to worship the king, uh, Jehovah, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, if we look at it from the side of creation, well, uh, it's... Uh, the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the liberty of the glory of the children of God. God, that's Romans chapter 8. At the revealing of the sons of God, at Christ's coming back to earth, this deliverance will be affected. It is my personal belief, and I don't ask anyone to believe, I never ask anybody to believe with me on, about anything. Uh, don't just, please don't just believe something just because I believe it. I think heaven's empty right now. I don't think anybody's there but God and the angels. I, don't, I think that scripture is, is correct when it says, No man hath ascended unto heaven. Uh, the, one of the, I believe one of the common misconceptions, uh, there's many, like, you know, little children with wings, you know, angels... When we die, we're all angels and we have wings and there's there's female wings and there's children. There's female angels and, and children angels all have wings and stuff. I think only a certain class of angels have wings. I don't think all angels have wings. Uh, I am positive, for the most part, at least in my own thinking, that no one's in heaven right now. You know, uh, the idea that we, we die and we go immediately into his presence, that, that, that is scriptural. That is true, okay? But where is he when we go into his presence is the question. I don't believe it's heaven. Scripture has a lot to say about sleep, soul sleep. The sleeping, God puts us to sleep. We don't die. God puts us to sleep, and we sleep until we are resurrected. That's, that's how it works, okay? Now, if you want to believe, and you're welcome to it, I, I'm not going to fault you. If you want to believe that, that, that you die, if you die, that when you die, that, that you will go immediately into his presence just to come back down to be raptured or raised from the dead, from, from the grave, 
when Christ returns, whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, whatever, you know, if, if, if that's what you believe, then that's fine. I, it doesn't work for me, folks. It just doesn't. I believe, and I've done videos on this, my personal belief is that, I, that if I die, if I, that death is my death, our death, our death, physical death, is the rapture. Because time has become eclipsed, and we've slept through that period of time. So that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, but it's just not in some place in heaven up there, you know, where that no man has ascended unto heaven. It's not in a, we're not just spiritual beings without a body. That, that would, we would be incomplete if we're there waiting on a body, then heaven wouldn't be what heaven, God says heaven is we would lack something we would be there would be an anxious awaiting for something that hasn't occurred yet i don't see that at all in scripture either i believe our death is the rapture because we are propelled forward in time to that point of the rapture that's what i believe i, I believe uh, that it's one grand reunion the grand the grandest reunion of all the ages you don't have to, to agree with me, That's but that is my own personal belief. And so I don't mind telling you that that's, that's what I believe. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There will be no unconscious state in which we are conscious. Okay, that, to me that just doesn't make sense at all either. Okay, yeah, we're kind of in this limbo kind of a state. We're in between the two places, or we're there and we're not, we're incomplete. We're not, we're not fully, you know, we don't have a body. We don't have a, because it hasn't been raised yet. We're just waiting for that. And I just don't see that that's how that works. Now, as far as tribulation period saints, when, trib, when the tribulation period saint, uh, if he does, if he isn't martyred, he will, go alive into the kingdom to, to populate the kingdom, to repopulate the kingdom. There will be those in the tribulation period who are not, both Jews and Gentiles, who are not martyred for their faith, who enter into, who walk right into the kingdom alive, the, the kingdom age. But then they will die at some point. And if they are a believer, if they are saved during that kingdom period and they die, I don't think there's any 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 reason. There's no, sleep is not necessary. The I, the whole idea of being put to sleep, there's nothing else to wait for. So they immediately go into the presence of God in the heavenly city, and they join the other saints, the, the angel, Christ, God, the angels, the unfallen angels, the Old Testament saints, the church age saints. All the tribulation saints, they're now, that's their abode, okay? Because they're in a glorified body, or they've been raised from the dead. If you've been, if you're raised from the dead, you're in a glorified body. Whereas those who are not saved during the millennium will then uh, go to sleep. They'll sleep through the millennium, just as the unsaved do today. If you are not one of God's people and you die today unsaved, you will sleep until you'll miss it all, okay? You'll just miss it all. You'll miss the show, okay? You'll, you're going to be propelled forward into the future to the end of the kingdom age where that you will then be resurrected at the last resurrection, which you don't want to be resurrected there. And... Uh, that's the great white throne judgment for those who are unsaved. So maybe that sheds a little light on, at least we, we're getting a glimpse of what's going on. Join us uh, next uh, Sunday for our study in Corinthians. The following Wednesday, we're going to continue on in looking at our forever home. I hope uh, you find it interesting. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, rest in him. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.